Fabric CA uh, overview as of uh, February 16th, 2017. What I'd like to do is, uh, we've been doing a lot of work for usability. I'd like to just give a high level view of how to use Fabric CA. <clears throat> we've, we now have split Fabric CA into two different commands, Fabric CA server, Fabric CA client. The from an installation perspective, you can use uh, Go Get. We ov obviously also build uh, Docker images um, for these as well. But I'll simply mention how to install with uh, with Go Get. You can install either of the commands separately or all together. Um, for example, if I wanted to install them in a in this I can just briefly show you that this installs those images. Um, while waiting for that to complete, I'll just give an overview of what I'm going to show. Uh, <clears throat> how to use these commands, I'll show how to start a, a root certificate server and then to enroll the intermediate CA certificate uh, server with the, the root certificate. I'll show a little bit of how uh, attributes are used to, to control who's able to access that. And then uh, lastly, how to register and enroll identities, uh, a peer identity. Now let's go back to uh, the installation, you can see that I, I set, in this case, uh, to a directory that did not exist. I had just removed it. And did a go get, so if I go to demo and the bin directory, I have these two commands. Uh, the ones that are currently in uh, the repo are not the ones I'm going to be demoing today because there's a lot of functionality that hasn't been merged yet. So I'm just going to go to uh, to my repo, which is here. And uh, in order to make them, you simply type fabric CA server, fabric CA client. They're already made, so there's nothing to make. And it puts them into the bin directory. That's where I'm going to be doing this work. Um, <clears throat> so. Step one, I want to start my root certificate server. I'm going to use this command. And uh, I'll say start, give it a dash C for a config file. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, a default location for a config file that it'll look for, uh, but I'm wanting to run multiple things on the same machine and therefore I'm keeping them separate by using the putting the config file in different locations. You'll see that I also have to give a bootstrap user ID and password. Uh, that's the minimal thing for when, cre when you create a default configuration file that it needs to be able to to have that. So let's run this command. Okay you can see that the server is up and running. Let me uh, stop it and show you what just happened, and then I'll, I'll restart it later. Um, this is uh, created the server root directory because that's what I gave the server root config file location, so it created things relative to the config file. This is the, uh, the database uh, that it created. Uh, this is, and this is the uh, certificate and key. But let's look at the uh, config file that it created. This has a lot of information in it that should be very readable. I'll go through it very quickly. The listening port, whether or not you want to debug, debug mode, <clears throat> which you can also control with a dash D option on the command line. Ena enabling disabling TLS, uh, your locations for your 
CA certificate file and key file that I just showed you that it created. The registry section, this is where it keeps identities. Um, by default, uh, there's only one identity, a bootstrap identity, and remember on the command line we gave a dash b option uh, with a user ID password and that's what was in what was placed here. There is a root affiliation um, and then a list of attributes. These are all of the attributes that are used internally by the Fabric CA itself. Obviously all of these attribute names start with HF for Hyperledger Fabric so we reserve that namespace for attributes that are used by the Fabric CA but you can add new attributes yourself for different identities. Now you don't have to keep, this is when the Fabric CA server is functioning as, ident as an identity. You can, if I skip down here, you can see that we can also, you know, there's an LDAP section. If this were enabled, the LDAP server itself is used for retrieving, for, both, for two purposes, as it says here, to authenticate an enrollment ID in secret as well as to retrieve identity attributes. Uh, I'm not going to be demoing the uh, LDAP this morning, but, uh, but you can see that um, it, it, if you configure it, you're giving them a, a LDAP identity with read-only access to your LDAP server. This is your uh, distinguished name, password, host port, and base URL. Um, Okay, that, that's all I'll say for LDAP at this, at this moment. Uh, let me go back up. You can see the, uh, the database section of this file. We support uh, three different databases, uh, SQLite, which is what we're using by default, Postgres and MySQL. So you, you configure the type here. And, the type, and we have, based on the type, we'll... Um, the data source value depends on the type. Affiliations uh, are used for T-certs. Uh, you can build any hierarchy you want. And um, the signing section is used for uh, controlling how the uh, Fabric CA server issues certificates. It's issuing certificates that can be used for as certificates as well as used for signing authority. This is the expiration time that you can change. Uh, this says that we can use this for a intermediate CA server. You can have multiple profiles as well. So if you wanted to, uh, to have one, a default usage that had certain constraints and profiles that had others, you can also use that. The CSR section contains uh, template information for that it used when, when you do uh, an enrollment, or actually from a server perspective, we're doing an enrollment with a parent server, which I'll, sh I'll demo in a second. And then there's a crypto section that just uh, defines the various crypto primitives, which is the same as is used uh, in the fabric, base fabric itself. Okay, so now let me go back to uh, to the server and start it again. I'm going to take, I'm going to remove this because we no longer need it. It's already created the config file and it's stored there. So now we're back up and running. The now next I want to enroll a the Bootstrap user that we gave it. Um, when we gave this user ID and password. Now I'm wanting to uh, enroll this user. Okay, note that uh, that created a, because I gave it the client root admin location it created this directory with the config file for the client. Let's look at that briefly. Um, really the only thing 
of great importance is it stores the server URL so you don't have to keep entering it. Um, also TLS section similar to before. This uh, is a certificate signing uh, section for for that is a, a work in progress actually for uh, for being able to enroll new users. Let's see. Okay, so now I want to register an enter. Uh, now that I've enrolled my root administrator ID, I want to register two new uh, IDs. I'm going to register a an ID called uh, Intermediate CA, NCA, for short, and let me first show you this. Uh, int ca json which we're referencing on the command line notice it just has the the name of the user which is the id the nca the type of the user in this case it's a ca type a group which is the affiliation group <clears throat> these are some well-known things the org one was one that was put there by default and notice here the attribute i'm giving this this user this attribute when I register it, which is the HF intermediate CA attribute. Okay, so let's uh, register this user. Notice that it came back with a one time password, which we'll use again in a second. But for next, I want to uh, register another identity, and this the only difference is that this user does not have that special attribute. Oops. That's the server screen. Okay, and same, it also succeeded, gave a one-time password. Now I want to, uh, next step, I want to, to en try to enroll using the non-NCA identity. This will fail because it doesn't have the needed attribute. Okay, so I'm going to need to notice this is the fabric server CA init command. I'm giving it, <clears throat> I'm giving it a uh, a path to a a new config file, one that does not exist, so it'll create it for me. I'm giving it a Bootstrap user that it needs, that it requires in order to put it anytime that file doesn't exist, and. Here, I need to replace this XXX with the one-time password that was given for, given here for the, oops, this one, for the non-int. Okay, note that this did fail. Let's look at the error message. It says, Error response from server was user non it does not have this attribute. Okay, now I want to show how it, it passes when we run it with enroll this new user that does have the attribute. Again, I need to replace the XXXX with the one time password that was returned by the int, which was here. And see it was successful this time. So now we have a, have registered a identity for, <coughs> uh, sorry, en enrolled the identity for the CA uh, server. So the CA ser this uh, intermediate CA server has been initialized. Next, we can start that server. Uh, first, I want, I'm going to have to stop the, uh, the root CA server because it's listening on that port. And now we'll start the uh, oops, wrong server.
Okay, so now we're starting the intermediate server. So it's up and listening. Next, we want to enroll an in, uh, intermediate bootstrap user that was created. When we notice up here, we gave it the bootstrap user admin admin pw. When we initialize the intermediate CA server, now we want to enroll this uh, administrator. This is very similar to the enroll that we did for the administrator for the root CA. So now we that succeeded. And now we want to use that identity of this intermediate administrator to register a peer identity. Let me um, paste this and I'll show you the peer one. Peer one JSON is very simple. It simply says ID, and the type of the ID is peer. So remember, it was CA before. And again, the group is org one. So now we register that. We get back the one-time password for that registration. And last, we want to enroll the peer. This is a uh, very similar to enrolling the intermediate CA using the Fabric CA client command. Need to replace the uh, xxxx with this intermediate uh, with this one-time password. But um, and now we've enrolled the this user. So let's look at the uh, this directory. And you can see that it created the certificate key file and the config file which is just another client file that you, similar to what you saw before. Uh, now it is possible to uh, to not to change the uh, the configuration for max enrollments uh, that let me show you that real quick the max enrollments uh, here to say how many times you can uh, use a particular password. So um, that concludes the, uh, the demo.